Hey, Pete here for Studio Live today. Now, automation is one of the most powerful tools in GarageBand on iOS. It can help you clean up your tracks and make sure your mixes are balanced and sounding great but it can have a pretty steep learning curve when you're getting the hang of it. So today, I'm gonna to take you through everything you need to know to use automation in your projects in GarageBand. Let's go. Okay, here we are in GarageBand on the iPad and I've loaded up a track here. This is the theme music for my other YouTube show, which is called $2 Looker, which is a very big departure from Studio Live today. But if you like the sort of content I have here, it might be worth having a quick look. Anyway, let's get on with this. We've got uh, a number of tracks here. I'll let you have a listen to what it sounds like right now. And then we'll go in and we'll do some automation to clean up this mix and make it sound much better. Let's have a listen now. So there's immediately a few things that we need to do there and automation is going to be key to helping us do these. We want to bring some instruments in and out of the mix. We want to use some fades and some fade ins and fade outs to actually help tidy up this track and let's do that now. So you might notice here that uh, every guitar and bass track has two tracks and that's because this was actually written using the virtual instruments. So the track up here, the guitar track here, here and the bass here, you can see that they're using the virtual instruments and then I've recorded real guitars and bass over the top just to improve the sound and make it sound more like a real recording. So let's jump in and first handle these two guitars because these are the driving force behind this track. If we solo these, and let's just take a listen to what these two guitars sound like. <laughs> so you can hear there that Especially at the end there, we need to do some tidying up. So we're gonna use automation to fade out the end of this track. So let's tap on here and tap automation. And here you can see we can start adding in our automation. Now the first thing we need to do is add some automation points. So I'm gonna slide the slider at the top here. And where I want to actually fade out these guitars, I'm gonna tap. And then I'm gonna tap another point at the very end here. I'm gonna do the same on this track here. And let's actually attack these one at a time. So for this one, let's grab that point and then we're just gonna drag it down. And you can see now that we've got this yellow line here that goes along, it drops down and it goes to zero volume at the end. So if we now have a listen to what this guitar alone sounds like, let's take a listen. Okay, so you can hear there at the end, we won't play it again, at the end where there's that big crunch sound <laughs> where I obviously sort of hit the guitar at the end and there was a bit of feedback and whatnot there, that's now been removed because it's actually faded down at the end. Let's grab the other guitar and we'll do the same here. We'll drag that down and let's take a listen. So there you go, you, you can hear at the end there where it does that bit where it goes and there's a little crunch there. That crunch is now not as noticeable. And if we put this in the context of the rest of the track and hit play. You can hear that it's sounding a lot better. Obviously we've got some work to do with the other tracks, but with the guitars, that just gives you an idea of a really quick move we can use to fade out our guitars using automation here in GarageBand. So let's jump out of that. We'll turn off our uh, addition, our ability to add. And what we can do now is actually adjust these without accidentally adding new points. So that's one thing to keep in mind is with that on, you can add new points and move those around. But as soon as that's off, you can only move existing points. So we can now only touch and move either up and down or left and right. You can only go one direction at a time. And then we can move those automation points and move them to wherever we want. So we can now see very faint automation lines behind these guitar tracks. And what's also changed is that these uh, sliders over here, our faders for the volume, have now got a yellow circle. And that means that we can't actually adjust these using the faders. We can only adjust volume now using automation, 
which, as I've said before, is a really good reason why you want to leave automation till the very end, because as soon as you add in automation, you now can't adjust these volume levels on individual tracks. So let's see what else we need here. I noticed that the cash register sound here at the end is pretty harsh. So I want to do a little bit of uh, automation on this one as well. So we'll do the same thing. We'll tap and we'll hit automation. And we'll solo this track and just listen to what that cash register sound sounds like. Yeah, so we need the volume a little bit lower to begin with, but we also, I want to fade out so we don't get that background noise. This isn't a very good sample that I have. <laughs> I probably need to find a better sample to replace it with, but um, it, yeah, definitely has a lot of sort of hiss and background noise there. So once again, we're going to turn on our automation points. We're going to tap here and tap again, and then we'll turn off our ability to add. And now we can start playing with these points. So we'll tap and drag this one down. If you're having trouble selecting these, when you tap, if you just sort of tap and start dragging, okay, that worked, but sometimes it won't actually register that you've touched it. So if you just touch and hold for a minute until you get that line and then do your change, and if you want to go sideways, do the same thing, tap and hold and move side to side. And then you can actually do that. So I don't want the volume to go to zero. So for this one, I'm just going to try this curve to begin with. And let's see what that sounds like much better so you don't have that hiss at the end and let's bring that back into the context of the track and have a listen you can hear there much better you can still hear a little bit of that background noise with the sample but using that fade with the automation has really helped us out and has made this sound a lot better so we've done our fade out. What about a fade in? What if you want to fade an instrument in? Well, let's do that with this particular percussion loop here. We've got this shaker loop that we've used Apple loops for. Let's have a listen. So what I want to do with this is I want to actually fade it in and then fade it back out again. So we want to do a curve where we go up to the volume and then back down again. Let's do that now. We'll tap and hit automation. We'll turn on our automation points. We're going to tap once at the end, once at the other end, once in the middle. So the actual volume we've got here is where it's at at the moment, but what we want to do is just spike this up in the middle. So let's bring it up to about, yeah, minus five. And now you can see we have a fade in and then a fade back out. It's going to start quiet. It's going to build up and then it's going to fade back down again. Let's listen to what that sounds like now. There you go, you can hear that it builds up to the volume in the middle and then it fades away again. Let's put that in the context of the mix. We'll take the solo off and have a listen. Okay, it's probably a little bit <laughs> too much there. You can hear it really start coming in. So you can play around and make this a little more subtle. So we'll do something like that. There you go. And, and I might not use that in the final mix because it, uh, maybe it's not needed, but it's an idea. And the, the good thing with this is you can experiment, you can play around with it. If you don't like it, hit undo a bunch of times and it goes completely away. And then you're back to no automation on the track and you can have it as it was when you first started. But that's a way that we can do a fade in and then a fade out here in automation in GarageBand. Now, one of the questions I'm asked a lot is, can you automate anything except for volume? And the biggest thing people want to do is panning. So how do we automate something to go start at the left, go to the right, come back to the left, something like that? Well, it's a little bit trickier in GarageBand because we don't have automation control over panning, but there's a way to do it. And I'll show you how now. What I want to do is let's use this organ, organ sound here, and I'll solo it. And let's just take a listen to what it sounds like now. So that's the sound of our organ. If we go into our mixer here, we can see at the moment it's panned right up the middle. But what I want this organ to do is I want it to start on the left and then go all the way over to the right. Or maybe, maybe let's just do it, make it go start on the left, go to the right and then bounce back to the left. Something a bit fun. So it's just going to move across the stereo field as we go. Let's make that happen now. So the first thing we need to do is we need to duplicate this track. We're gonna tap on it and hit duplicate so that we now have two copies of the same track. We now need to do the same with the audio. So we're going to tap and copy the audio. 
and then we'll come down to our next track, line up our playhead right at the start of that, tap again, and hit paste. Not select all, <laughs> hit paste. And there we go. So now we have two identical tracks. If we solo both of these, all that it's gonna sound like is that our volume is gonna be doubled. There you go. And they're both right out the middle, so nothing's happening there at the moment. So what we actually want to do is a little bit of a trick here. Let's now go into here and go to our panning settings by tapping on the little icon at the top here. And we're gonna pan this one all the way to the left. We're going to tap the next one down here, and we're going to do, you guessed it, the exact opposite, all the way to the right. So now we have two tracks, one pan left, one pan right. That sounds like this. And depending if you're listening on stereo speakers, you won't actually hear any different, but let's just solo the left one. And then if we solo the right one, There you go, so you can hear, potentially, if you're listening on stereo speakers or headphones, that they are on opposite sides. Okay, what about this panning that I wanna do, that I want to bring them across from one side to the other? Well, what I need to do is use volume automation, but use it in a creative kind of way. So we'll do the first track first. So we'll tap on our first track and we'll go to automation. And we're going to add some points here. We'll add a point at the start, a point at the end, and a point in the middle. So let's start the volume, turn off that, start the volume with nothing, go up to full and end with nothing. So what that's gonna do is it's going to start on the left side, there's gonna be nothing there, it's gonna go up to the peak volume and then it's gonna come back down to being completely muted. Now if we come down to the next track, we're going to do, you guessed it, the exact opposite. So let's do the same again with our three points, turn off our changes there, and instead of bringing it up, we'll drop the center down to the middle there. So what you can see here is that we now have a track where the left channel here, so the top track is going to be at zero volume, it's gonna go up to max volume, back to zero. The right track is gonna start at its max volume, go down to zero and come back up. So let's have a listen to this and see if this has worked. So if you're listening on stereo speakers or stereo headphones, you'll have heard that it started on one side and it's gone all the way to the other side. We're not actually doing panning automation here, but we're using two sets of volume automation to uh, simulate a panning automation effect here in GarageBand, which I think is pretty cool. And back out on our track now, you can see that those curves are in there and looking good. Okay, another popular use of automation is where we want to actually mute a section of a track. And I'll show you an example on this guitar. I probably don't actually want to mute this part of this guitar, but just so that I can show you how to do this particular process. So if we play just this other guitar that we haven't done anything with yet, uh, let's have a listen. So we probably need to do the fade out on this one as well, but if we tap and go to our automation, Let's say that we don't want that second chord playing. We actually want it to completely mute after it plays the first chord. So we're gonna put on our automation points at the top. We're going to tap on the points that we want here. And now we need to actually create two additional points. If I can do that, like this. And now we'll turn this off and I'll show you what we need to do if we want it to go for an immediate volume change as opposed to a fade. So let's zoom in on this track so we can see a little more of what we're doing. And uh, now because I've turned this off, I can move these without creating new ones. So we'll move this right to that point. This one, we're going to move all the way to the bottom and this one as well, because there where we want, you can see there it's got negative infinity dB, which means muted, means there's zero sound coming through. But at this point, it's going to fade down and then fade back up. So what if we want this to actually completely be silent? Well, we just need to grab this point, move it all the way to the left, so that it's completely under there. And you can see as soon as you go too far, it removes the point entirely. So you do have to be a little bit careful here. You can just see the point where it goes like that and then just bring it back a little bit. And there you go. So now we've got those vertical lines. What this is going to do is it's going to drop the guitar completely and then bring it back in at the volume. So it'll probably sound a bit weird on its own, but let's have a listen. So it's probably gonna sound a little bit strange, 
especially soloed, but let's play and have a listen to what this sounds like. So if we put that back in the mix though, it'll probably sound a little bit less unusual, except that um, we probably wanted it in there. Let's have a listen. So you can hear it's a bit absent. Again, this isn't a mixing decision I would make on this track, but if you had a part that you just wanted to mute, but you wanted to leave it there in case you wanted to bring it back in or do something. So obviously you could split and delete this section out, but then it's completely gone. If you just wanna play around with some mix decisions, sending this down to mute for that section is a good way to do that. Okay, before we finish up here, I'm gonna give you one more tip to do with volume automation. And this isn't actually using automation, but using the clip gain or the volume of a particular clip of audio here in GarageBand. So let's grab this bass track because it hasn't had any attention yet. Let's uh, solo it and play it and see what it sounds like. Okay, so that's our bass track. We could use automation here if we wanted to say increase the volume at the end or drop the volume or do any sort of phase that we've done in the others. But what if we wanted just one of these notes or just a section of this to really sort of hit hard. So let's pretend that we wanted this end section here, these last couple of notes to really uh, hit hard at the end and enhance this track. So that part there where we do the dun dun, and I recorded this a little bit low on the volume, so it's a bit hard to see our waveforms there. And that's an, another tip is I should have probably got a lot more level in here so we could actually see our waveform a bit better. So what we'll do is we'll tap and split the audio here. We'll tap split, and then we have to do the little flick down. And now we've got two pieces of audio. If I zoom back out, you can see here that we've got two separate pieces of audio and we can split as many times as we like. So if we only wanted a small amount there, we could split it again just for one particular note. So you can really zoom in on a section. I use this a lot for vocals when you want to do vocal automation, but you don't want to use the automation to write it. You just want one word or one phrase is too quiet. You can use this trick. So what we need to do is tap and tap again. And if we tap settings, we can actually go in and start adjusting the volume of that. So this gain dial here, we can take it down to minus 30. Unfortunately, you can't take it down to zero or, or minus infinity, so it's never gonna mute it, but we can get the gain down or up. So let's just put the gain up by about four and a half. Uh, let's make it extreme so that you can hear the difference. Let's put it up by eight dB. And it doesn't actually change the waveform there, but when we play back, you'll hear the difference. So those last two notes hit really hard and let's play that in the mix. And once again, that's not how I'd have it in the final mix. That's just an idea of what we might want to do with this particular track to enhance a part of that audio. Now, one final, final thing before I go, a lot of people ask, can we automate anything but volume here in GarageBand? And the short answer, unfortunately, is no. We can only automate the volume and we can automate it on any track, individual track that we want. So if you're looking to automate things like effects and other items here in GarageBand, the way to do that is to do similar to what we did with the organ, is to duplicate it onto a second track and then add your effect to that second track and only have the audio playing on the second track when you want the effect. So I use that a lot for things like delays on vocals. If I want to, a particular word to actually start um, to have a delay at the end of a phrase, then I'll put the delay just on that particular last word on a separate track and then leave my original track clean. So you will need to use multiple tracks to do that sort of thing, but then you can use your volume automation to bring in and out different effects as you need them. But no, unfortunately we can't actually automate any other elements except for volume here in GarageBand. So I hope you found this useful and you've got a better understanding of automation and the power that automation has in your final mix and mixing your projects. It's a very cool feature, has a bit of a steep learning curve, but hopefully this has kickstarted you towards being an automation expert here in GarageBand. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.